By the way, I've tried to film this video three times. I am like at this point, we're pretty much over it. Like I'm over it, but but I gotta get a video up on Monday because I said I would, so I fucking am. Also, look at look at I made it all Halloweeny for you. Isn't that sweet? Yeah, that's sweet. Spent like ten euros on it. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Movie Reads where I talk about books and things. And I know you can see behind me that I Halloweened shit up for you. But here's the thing, for me Halloween is kind of from October 1st to November 31st, but you know, some people like to pretend that that's Christmas time. I'm not one of those people. Speaking of, by the way, I still have a giveaway going up until the very Halloween day, October 31st, and I will announce the winner in a video and of course I will try to contact you in some way. I swear this video is cursed, like straight up cursed. So anyway, so um, I'll have a link up here to where you can enter a giveaway to win 20 euros worth of books and that is open internationally. You just have to go watch the video and you'll get everything. So books, scary books. We're gonna talk about scary books today. Now here's the thing you guys. I didn't really get into scary literature until relatively recently. Like I feel there was a point in my teenage years where I dabbled in it. But right now, really, I don't read a lot of horror books. Or well, I didn't used to read a lot of horror books. I'm getting back into them, but it's like a slow process. If you want a recommendation of movies that I think are terrifying, I can do that. But either way, I thought, you know what? let's throw my book channel a bone and show them the scariest books that I've ever read. And maybe you haven't read some of these and you pick them up. So with that really long, I, why do I always make four minute long intros before starting a video? Let's get started. So the first book that I have to recommend here is the one and only, the, the OG scary book. And that is Dracula by Bram Stoker. Now, in case you've been living under a rock for like 200 years, this book is about a vampire. Technically, it's actually about a succubus, okay? But we're not gonna get into the, you know. So uh, this book is actually told in uh, diary format, letter formats, and it's about a man named Jonathan Harker. Jonathan Harker has to go to this town, to this uh, very beautiful palace, I, not palace, castle. I don't remember the why he has to go there, but he just fucking has to go there. And it's creepy as fuck. Now I'm gonna say something. Every time something someone is like, this book is so atmospheric, I'm like, but is it Dracula atmospheric? Because Dracula has like the, like, most incredible atmosphere out of any book that I have ever read. In fact, I remember one time I had it like open, I was reading it and I was so into the book because of the atmosphere that was happening that somebody came downstairs and was like, hey, and I was like startled, like physically startled. So yes, this book is amazing. I will say that the first half of the book is actually to my liking better than the second half of the book. But you know, to each their own. I just think that if you're gonna go into it, just if you're gonna go into like horror, start with the classic. And instead of going to like H.P. Lovecraft or um, what's the other one, Poe, where they might be a little bit more like the language is not as easy to understand. This one has a pretty straightforward, really easy to understand language. And it honestly, if you're scared of how big it is, it goes by super fast. So atmospheric, scary vampires, perfect for Halloween. So get get your groove on, get your Dracula on, I'll stop. The next book I have on this list, I have talked about Ad Nauseam. I remember the first time I mentioned it, I was like, I'm never gonna mention that book again. And I have mentioned it a lot of times and it's because somebody asked me what was my, like, like the scariest book I have ever read. And I have to mention The Long Walk by Stephen King. Now this book, um, this was written by as him as Richard Bachman. He actually wrote a lot by, as Richard Bachman, which I mean, just proves to me that he's not just the name. But regardless, this book is about a annual walk, basically, that only boys can enter and it doesn't have a finish line. It's a race without a finish line. The finish line is basically the last boy standing. 
what happens is you have to keep up a pace of four miles per hour as long as you can. This can take days, you can't take time off to go to the bathroom, you can't get outside help, you can't slow down, you can't stop. If you do, you get three warnings, three warnings and they shoot you, you're out, like you're out. And the winner gets whatever they want. The price is basically whatever your heart desires, which alone should tell you that the price doesn't exist because what if it's like, well, my heart desires the moon. Like, are you gonna give them the moon? But I think what's really interesting about this book is that this is the first time, and I believe only time, that I've been scared a protagonist is not gonna make it. Like at some point, I really was convinced the protagonist wasn't going to make it and maybe they don't make it. I'm not going to tell you because that would be a spoiler. But if you want to know if the protagonist makes it, then read this book. And the cool thing is one of the reasons you don't know the, if the protagonist makes it is because we have different perspectives and we follow each of the boys and we find out a lot about the boys. And of course, we have a main character, but that could change to another main character if the main character does get shot in the middle of the book. So I 100% recommend this book if you're looking for a spooky book to read during Halloween. Next up, I have a book that you might be a little bit surprised at. It's the second book in the series. It's not even the first book in the series, but this was the one that really scared me. And that is Tunnel of Bones by Victoria Schwab. Now this is the second book in the Cassidy Blake series and what this book is about is about a girl who sees ghosts. She sees ghosts because she fell into a river and when she fell into the river she got saved by a ghost and ever since then she can see ghosts. Now the twist is her parents are actually um, very famous like novelists that write about ghost stories and they can't see ghosts but they get offered this TV program contract thing to go through Europe and go to each city and talk about the ghosts of the city. Of course, her parents can't see ghosts, but she can. And in the first book, you're kind of introduced to the world, to stuff like that. And in the second book, you kind of get to see that there might be a big evil out there. And when I was introduced to that big evil, let's just say your girl, had to like put the book down and call her mommy in Venezuela at the time because my mom was living in Venezuela and I was like scared shitless. Like I was really scared. So I really recommend this. And also for those of you who like spooky reads but don't want to be like super terrified, I think that this is like a good middle ground if you know what I mean. But actually I think this shit is fucking scary. So like don't think I'm like, <laughs> this is just a middle grade book. It won't scare you because it scared me. Like I couldn't sleep that night. It was really bad, like real bad. Next up, we have another book that I've talked about before because you asked me what's the scariest book I've ever read. And that is Night Fell by Marisha Passel. Pessel, not Passel. So this book is told in, what is that called? I know, ooh, what is in here? Oh, look. This is from when I worked at HBO. It's one of my, my little things. But anyway, <laughs> this book is told in an unconventional format. You've got like paper, newspaper clippings, you've got letters, you have websites that you go to. And it's honestly, that just adds to the atmosphere and to the realism of the book because you really get into the main character's head. Now the main character is an um, like a journalist. He's a not like a journalist. He's a journalist and he is obsessed with this filmmaker called Cordova or Cordova, whatever you want to call him. And Mr. Cordova, he is one of those people that is so private about their private life. Nobody gets invited to their house. Nobody even knows where they live really. Like, do they really live there? Nobody knows about his family. They just know that a lot of tragedy has gone on in his life. And a lot of people speculated that he wasn't that much of a good person. So this investigative journalist writes a piece on him because they say that he, that um, Mr. Cordova, the director, was a Satanist or a child molester. But then it turns out that the source that was being used was discredited. So they completely ruined his career. You know, you always have to make sure your sources are the correct sources. So 
what ends up happening is many years later mr cordova's daughter dies in a very strange way and a lot of people suspect suicide but why would a rich you know daughter of a famous director who is described as like being so beautiful and, and and strange and everything why would she commit suicide so he gets on the trail and let me tell you if you're a superstitious person because i'm a superstitious person so i i like i like to think that there are things out there that are cannot be explained because that just like i, I don't know that gives me like a little bit you know of sauce in life so I just think um, if you're a superstition person, if you're a superstitious person, you're really going to enjoy this book. And again, there was a point in this book where I was just like, nope, we're noping out of this right now because I can't handle it because I'm really scared. A lot of people say that the ending of this book is not good or that it the, the payoff wasn't good enough. But because I like open endings, and this is not a spoiler, I like open endings, and I think that this book needed something like that. It needed for there to not be answers to your burning questions. If you're somebody that really likes things tied up in a nice little bow and for questions to be answered, this book might not be for you. But if you're someone like me that really likes the mystery of life in general, this book, man, I still think about this book sometimes. Let's just put it that way. Like, <laughs> I'm scared. Like, I did, like, even holding it right now, like, I was thinking I should reread it. And I was like, fuck no, I don't want to reread that. That was scary. <laughs> so, <laughs> scary book. Really, really good to read during Halloween or even during November. Because I feel like November is low-key post-Halloween. Like, I don't do christmas until december the first or in the u.s when i lived in the u.s it was like okay after thanksgiving we can do christmas uh don't i don't celebrate thanksgiving because who like you know thanksgiving is just like a really weird holiday we're not gonna get into that the next one i have is bird box by josh mallerman now bird box is straight up just a scary survivalist novel this is a novel where like first of all this is exactly what I want from a horror novel I want Lovecraftian horror I want cosmic horror I want shit that is not explained ever like like if you if you notice the things that I like in the end most of them don't have a logical explanation because that's the thing that scares me if what scares you is more like slasher thrillers, I don't think these books are for you, but I like my supernatural or even real life things that just end up being like, what happened? I don't know, do you know? Apparently not. But anyway, Bird Box is about, imagine normal world, normal day, and then suddenly something happens. We don't know what. But when people take a look at a certain something, we don't know if it's alien, excuse me. We don't know if it's aliens. We don't know if it's like, I don't know, demons, whatever. They start to commit suicide, which reminds me of that really bad movie. Remember the movie where the plants were like, fuck humans, and they were like, we're gonna kill you all. That's a really bad movie. But this is actually a really good book. And um, the main character in this is named Mallory. And Mallory, finds a way to survive they get into this house and they have everything papered and everything is good but you know what happens in these stories what happens in every zombie movie when you open the door to the nice strangers bad things don't open the door to strangers if we're ever in a zombie apocalypse and you come knocking at my door i'm gonna be like sorry dude but no i'm surviving so <laughs> they open the door and shit hits the fan i really like this book because first of all just the idea of you seeing something so strange that you cannot explain that it makes you want to kill yourself is kind not kind of it's totally terrifying and also there's a scene with dogs and animals and the fact that even they like might be like have the same reaction to these beings like that's some scary shit and well, Mallory uh, has to leave the house for reasons that I will not spoil for you. And it's just plain fucking scary. And um, I haven't watched the movie because I read this one time. And then I was like, I'm not doing that to myself. And again, like I'm not watching the movie because I'm like 
first of all, heartbroken, second of all, terrified. So that's Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. And the last book I have, and it's like a pleasure to have this book here because every I like I think about it every now and then, and I'm really happy that right now we can't go to my husband's like rural house here in Segovia because they have a florist and I'd be like constantly terrified thinking about this book and that is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. Did you really think I was gonna just leave you here with a bunch of white people? That wasn't gonna happen. But it's not because he's not white that he's here. Like this author is incredible. This book had me scared out of my fucking wits, okay? This book tells the story of a group of Native American people and they find a bunch of elk and they kill them. They, they, they literally like, they go overboard. Like they kill way more elk than they're supposed to and they do it in sacred land. Nothing happens and then this elk lady starts to chase them down and let me tell you, a elk lady is scary and the way they get taken out one by one and like how this book goes from you being from the point of view of the people trying to survive to you being in the point of view of the killer. I still have nightmares about this book. I still like think about it like every now and then I'm in my bed and I'm like, did I kill any elk? I, I don't think so. But it's it's a really well-written book. The atmosphere is incredible. And I 110% recommend that you read this book this Halloween season. I actually would recommend that you read it more into the winter months because this book is so wintry that it's just, it's just chef's kiss, okay? I love it. You should get on this boat. He has written a lot more horror and I've been getting into his books a lot, but I think this one was the one that I was just like, this 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 is it like i love this book and that's it those are the books that have scared me and that i hope will scare you because what is halloween without a little bit of a fright and you know what was a fright the fact that this is the fourth time that i am um recording this video so i hope that i get it right this time and i hope that you enjoyed it and if you did, please leave a like, please comment, please subscribe, please hit the bell button, and remember that I appreciate each and every single one of you. So, without any further ado, I bid you adieu with a reminder that I post every Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and that I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Bye, and be safe out there during these spooky times.